Hi everybody, so my name is Megan Fielder from Algebra Elevated. If you're new here, welcome to my channel where I talk about some math resources and some things that get me just really excited as a teacher to share with other teachers around the world. So today's topic, as a math teacher, how can we spend less time grading? Now this does apply to other teachers and other disciplines, so if you're not a math teacher, please stay tuned to kind of find out how you can maybe spend less time grading as well. But first, why did this come up? Well, obviously we all want to spend less time grading, but why? And for me, that why and why I came up with these ideas on my own was to give more quality feedback when I'm grading. So I have a big proponent of quality over quantity when it comes to giving grades on homework assignments or on tests and quizzes. If I'm just trying to grade everything all the time, I'm just slapping a grade on it and I'm not giving that quality feedback that I know it deserves. So what I did along the way in the past couple of years is I've scaled back how much grading I am doing, but when I am grading, I am giving it all and it's getting a lot of my attention. Now, other reasons why you should spend less time grading? We know our job includes so many more things. We have to answer emails. We have to work with students one-on-one. -on -one. We have to make our activities and our lesson plans. And that's the other thing that I spend a lot of my time doing now. I've traded that time from grading into spending time making resources and putting all my effort into that. As a result, that's why I now have my Teachers Pay Teachers store because I was able to spend that time and transfer that time into these cool activities that my students love. So now the how. How can we spend less time grading? I have a couple notes here, but I have five big ideas for how you can spend less time grading in your classroom. Number one, don't grade everything, or at least don't grade it all on accuracy. So this is where a lot of my time came or freed up. My daily homework, I have daily homework. Now I know that's a whole can of worms in itself. We're not gonna get into that right now, but daily homework, and I know my students don't feel it worthwhile to do their homework if they're not getting anything for it, which I understand. I mean, I get that as a human. So I level with them. I give them three points a day for their homework, but I glance at it. It is a completion grade. It is not something I look at. I do not collect it. I do not pass it back to them. I walk around, make sure it's done, that's it. And I know some people are doing it better than others and spending more time on it. Well, they're gonna get that reward back on the test. So I'm not worried about that. All I'm, no, all I'm doing is making sure that I'm giving them that motivation to do it because I'm gonna give them those points for it. But if I were to collect all that, grade it, give it all back, one, time is gonna pass by and that feedback is not going to be as worthwhile because it might be a couple days before they get it back. And two, I don't have time for that. <laughs> There's too many things. I would have to either assign less, which I feel passionate about not doing, or I would be spending all my time grading. So I, again, either don't grade everything altogether or what I do is don't grade everything for accuracy. So there's a lot of completion points in my classroom. Another component to that is when we do activities in class, I don't give them grades for that. I'm monitoring their behavior, I am encouraging them to work on it, and they get a benefit from doing it during class. So I don't feel like those activities need to go in the grade book. Now, if you're someone that plans projects, I got a tip for you coming soon. So stay tuned for that in a little bit. But the daily small tasks or small activities, I don't give credit for that or grade for that. I just make it part of my classroom. So tip number two, assign tasks, homework, quizzes, whatever, that can be graded for you. So thinking about some digital activities, boom cards are great. They grade and give that immediate feedback for students. And Google Forms, you hit submit, they grade it for you. Um, Google Sheets can be programmed to tell you or tell the students if it's right or wrong, so it's graded for you. You don't have to do anything after the fact, okay? Um, those are the main ones off the top of my head. The other ones that kind of go with that, but is tip number three, is assign tasks with those immediate feedback. So like I said, boom cards can give that immediate feedback, um, but like scavenger hunts. 
Scavenger hunts, they don't tell them it's right or wrong, but that immediate feedback makes it way easier for me to grade it once it is complete. I can just glance that they got, they went in the right order and then I'm done. I don't have to look at every single problem. Same with a uh, card sort, whether it's a digital card sort in Google Slides or a paper card sort that they're physically moving around on their desk, that is so much faster to grade than if it was just a worksheet with all those problems on it. Now, if you are looking for more of a worksheet, maybe it's a homework assignment or you want something on paper, I like to use option banks. So option banks are great because they require the students to match their answer to a letter in the option, in the option bank. And so then when you're grading the homework, you can just go, okay, number one, you should get F. Number two, you should have B. Number three, you should have A. And then at the end of it, I'm just like, okay, any questions on any of those? Do we want to dive deeper into any of those? But I don't have to go question by question by question. So it's making the activities kind of work for you on the back end. Um, let's see. Oh, then. Now to my bigger project folk. So if you are somebody that likes to assign bigger projects, I just finished one for Shapes of Algebra. If you don't know what that is, I'll be talking about that soon. But um, it's a project. It takes a couple days, but if I wait till the very end to collect that and start grading it, which is usually what happens, that's gonna take way too long to grade. It's gonna be overwhelming for me and it's going to take forever to get back to them or the students aren't gonna do anything for three days so that I can just grade. What I do instead is I chunk it up into individual pieces, individual grades, like benchmarks, which is better for the students. I do teach eighth graders, so that might be why. But it's better to them to have those checkpoints than to have this big, ginormous grade all of a sudden at the end. So maybe after day one, you have to show me your graphs, something like that, if it has graphs. And that would, you would have a checkpoint, you'd have a rubric, you give them those points then, and even if you don't total it until the end, you're checking in with them on that smaller scale. Um, then after maybe day three or four, you check in again, give them a grade on that portion of the task. And then the last portion might be about how it all comes together, or if there's a presentation, that could be a presentation grade piece to it. But this just prevents you from grading the whole project all after it's done for the students. Because you know when they're working in class for those five days, you can be staying with them on the grading, which is really, really nice for me, or in my opinion. Now, the last thing is when you choose to give that quality feedback. This is a little tip for how you can make it go a little smoother or a little faster for you. Um, a little background to this is that I do not give feedback very often, but when I do, I usually have it on a unit test. And I structure my class, I do not enjoy putting multiple choice on a unit test. I feel there are tricks and it doesn't really show what students know or they can backwards solve and I'll get into that in a whole nother video. But free response on a test, it can be hard to grade. What I found is I give the same feedback over and over and over again. Maybe something as simple as you didn't label your units. It happens all the time. Or something like when they're finding slope, they did change in x over y instead of changing y over x. Whatever. It's the same feedback for many, many students. What I end up doing is I create a little key. So I give that feedback a number. Maybe it's the, don't forget your units. Maybe that gets a number one. Then I type up a little table in a PowerPoint presentation or Google like slides or um, a Word document. And it would say one, and then what that symbol means. And it would mean you need to write units on your answers. And this kind of works twofold. For me, it's a lot faster. I don't have to write that same note a hundred times because I just have to write the number one. Number two, it's amazing what can happen for the student side of it. When they get their test back, they have to actually look at the number, look at the board, figure out what mistake they made, and then they can kind of dive into it more. It's not right there for them, and they kind of seem to engage with their test a little more. Now you are gonna get a few that don't bother, but for those that are interested in getting that feedback, it kind of means more because they had to look into it, and then usually they write a little note themselves so that they know later down what happened there. So all that to say, there are five tips to how you can potentially reduce grading in your classroom. 
Our jobs are worth so much more than just spending time looking at paper after paper. We need to be there for our students day in and day out, so we don't need to be looking at their work 100% of the time either. Um, if you have any questions or comments or any tips that you have been able to master for reducing grading in your classroom, please share below for other people watching this video and for myself. Um, like, subscribe, and share this video and my channel so that others can find these helpful tips as well. I look forward to talking to you in the next video.